so this week we are looking at rational numbers and comparing and ordering all of these rational numbers that we have been working with. So remember, our rational numbers are any number that can be made into a fraction that includes both positive and negative whole numbers because they can be made a fraction as well. Um, so that's fractions, decimals, mixed numbers, percentages, integers, positive and negative. But for this year, we're only going to be comparing and ordering positive versions of those fractions, decimals, and percentages. So let's look at a quick review of how to do that. So with fractions, there are multiple ways that you can compare these numbers. So the first way is to change everything into a decimal. And that's the strategy that we take when we are ordering numbers, the different forms of the rational numbers. But for fractions, I find that doing the butterfly method is the easiest way to compare these fractions. So let's review that. Um, if you wanted to change all of these into decimals, remember that you would just divide going top down, four divided by seven and you would get a decimal, and then three divided by five, and you would get a decimal, and then you would compare the decimals. But let's look at the butterfly method. So with this way, you cross over, and you go from bottom up, okay? That doesn't really matter, except for you need to place the product, the answer that you get from the multiplication at the top, because that's how you're going to compare them properly. So seven times three is 21. And then four times five is 20. So you would compare the products that you get, 20 and 21, and we know that 21 is bigger, so we're gonna have our less than sign opened up towards our bigger number. And then we can take a step back and look and say that four sevenths is less than three fifths. Okay, now I do quickly want to just compare, turn those into decimals and compare those really quickly so that you can see exactly that this butterfly method does in fact work. Okay, so we could do the long division. I'm gonna quickly use a calculator just because I'm not practicing my division at this time. I am just trying to change these fractions to decimals. So. 4 divided by 7 in a calculator will get you this number here, 0 0.5714. That's good enough. It does continue on. And then 3 fifths is just 0 0.6 or 6 tenths. And then if we're comparing these, remember with decimals, and we're going to go over that again here in just a minute, but when you're comparing decimals, you go one at a time from left to right, and as soon as you get a larger number, that is your larger number, and you can stop. So zeros are the same, five and six, six is larger, so three-fifths is larger than four-sevenths, or four-sevenths is less than three-fifths, so we did that correctly. All right, let's hop over to number two with our butterfly method again. We're going to go bottom up, so 8 times 3 is 24, 5 times 5 is 25, so very close here, but the 5 eighths is greater than 3 fifths. All right, now number three has some mixed numbers. So it's just a, another form of a fraction. You just have a whole number with the fraction or the part over the whole. So the best way to do this when you're comparing a mixed number with an improper is to either change the mixed number to improper or the improper to mixed number. So pick whichever one you prefer to do. Remember this would be division and this would be the C method. So I prefer to do the C method. So we're gonna go seven times one is seven, plus one is eight. Put it back over its original denominator, sevenths. Ah, so this mixed number of one and one seventh is the same as eight sevenths, and we're comparing it with eight sevenths, so we know that these two values are equal. All right, two mixed numbers here. So with this, you can convert them both. 
and then compare using your butterfly method. Or since the whole numbers are the same here, you can just ignore those whole numbers for a minute and do the method on just your fraction pieces and see which fraction piece is bigger. So again, whichever way makes you more comfortable or that you want to do is totally fine. Um, so I'm just going to do the butterfly method for the fraction pieces. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 2 is 8. And we see that this fraction is bigger than this fraction, so 1 and 3 fourths is larger than 1 and 2 thirds. All right, now I do want to show that one with um, the C method very quickly so we can see this. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5, put it back over 3. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7, put it back over 4. And now we can do the butterfly method this way. 3 times 7, 21. 5 times 4, 20. And yes, we do see that 5 thirds is less than 7 fourths. Okay, now, what if you had had this situation where it was one and two thirds and three and one fifth? Now, if we're comparing just the whole numbers here, obviously three is larger than one. So we wouldn't even have to look at our fraction portions because the whole numbers makes this a less than statement. All right, let's review how to compare decimals. We kind of did it in number one up there. But with decimals, you need to line up your decimal points and compare number by number from left to right. So it is easier to do this vertically. So if you're given it horizontally and you prefer it vertically, then I would just take the extra couple of seconds to rewrite it, lining up your decimals vertically. And then fill in any holes with a placeholder zero, okay? Because you can always add a zero at the back of a decimal without it changing its value. All right, so then again, you just go left to right, and as soon as you have a bigger number, that is your biggest decimal. So zero and zero, those are the same. Move on to the next, seven and seven, same. Two and three, well, three is bigger, therefore this is the larger decimal. Okay, let's look at number six. All right, you could do this horizontally just by using your fingers, or you can line it up vertically. So with fingers, zero and zero are the same, same, two and one. Ha, huh, two is bigger, therefore this decimal is larger than this. So even though there are more numbers this looks like it's bigger. We are going into more place values. You can't judge off of that. You have to go number by number because I could make this, and I'm gonna line it up vertically to show you this point. I can make this have the same number of place values just by adding zeros to the back because remember that does not change its value. So now we have the same number of numbers and we're gonna compare two is bigger than one. So that would be our larger decimal. Okay, so what if we're asked to compare different forms of rational numbers? So we're given percents and decimals to compare or fractions and decimals to compare or fractions and percents. Um, remember that our rational numbers can take these three different forms, either fraction, decimal, or percentage. They all have the same value, they just have different forms. So if they are the same, you can convert them very easily, and that is exactly what you do if you're given rational numbers in different forms and asked to compare them. Make them have the same form, and it doesn't matter which form it is when you're comparing. Um, so if you're looking at this and you're like, well, that's easy to take this percentage and make it a decimal, then great. Or if you look at this decimal and you say, oh, that's easy to make that a percentage, whichever, just make them have the same form. So I'll show it both ways, um, but you would only need to choose one. So if I were to make 20% a decimal, remember we would take the decimal from the back and move it two places for the 100% percent 
two places over, and that would be 0 0.2, or 20 if you wanted to write that. All right, so now we have a decimal that we can use to compare with this decimal. These are the same. Oh, 2 is bigger. So, therefore, 20% is bigger than 15 hundredths. Okay, now that's changing the percent to a decimal, but what if I change this decimal to a percent? We would move the decimal two places to the right to create the percent, and we would have 15%. Now, a lot of you may say that's easier to do, and then comparing 20% and 15% is way easier than comparing my decimals. So, hey, make sure that you just choose whichever way works for you. So, yes, 20% is bigger than 15%. They have the same form now and it's easier to compare. All right, let's look at if we're doing a percentage versus a fraction. So for this one, you can either make this a fraction by putting it over 100 per 100, 25 over 100, or 7 over 25, and then you could do your cross butterfly effect here, but you're gonna be dealing with some pretty large numbers. Okay, you could also take this fraction and reduce it. That would be 1 fourth versus 7 25ths, and then it may be a lot easier to do the butterfly method there. Or you could have changed both of these to decimals and compared the decimals. There's just lots of ways to do that. Um, so I'm going to use my reduced fraction here that I created, and I'm going to do my butterfly method. So we have 28 and 25. So we see that 7 25ths is going to be larger than 25%. I'm also going to show you changing them both into decimal form because this, if you're not um, strong with simplifying yet, may feel overwhelming. All right, so I'm going to take my 25% and make it a decimal. I'm going to come over here and make it a decimal by moving it two places to the left. So I have 0 0.25. And I'm also gonna change my 7 25ths into a decimal by dividing. Seven divided by 25. Okay, and seven divided by 25 is 0 0.28. So we see that two and two are the same, five and eight. 8 is larger, therefore 7 25ths is larger than 25%. So either way works. Okay, now we have one that goes over 100%, therefore we're going to have a mixed number comparison. So, so far we're starting off good with an equal-ish kind of comparison. So let's see exactly how close they are. All right, so for this, I'm going to change this one to a decimal and maybe this one into a decimal. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this, I would move one, two places, and I get 1.30, which it makes sense if I'm over 100%, I'm gonna have a mixed decimal here with a whole number and some parts. And then for this one, I have a whole number of one, and then the part over the whole will become the decimal. And I'm gonna do in my calculator six divided by seven. and I get 0.857, and it's a very long number that does not terminate. So I'm just gonna use the first two, 0.85, okay? And excuse me, that would round up to 0.6. And then we compare, one and one are the same, three and eight, oop, eight is bigger. So therefore our mixed number of one and six sevenths is larger than 130% or 130% is less than one and six sevenths. All right, and last concept to go over is ordering. And these directions, remember that's the most important part, is telling us to order from least to greatest. So from least to greatest, we're gonna to wanna to find the smallest and then work our way up to the largest. When you're ordering, the best thing that you can do is change them all to decimals. Okay, change them all to decimals. So
So the first one's a fraction, so to change that fraction to a decimal, we're going to divide, and we're going to do 8 divided by 25, and we get 0 0.32. This one is already a decimal, so I'm just going to drop it down. And then 38%, we would just move it two places to the left, the decimal there, and we get 0 0.38. All right, so now I'm going to compare them. Zeros are the same, 3, 4, and 3. So again, we're looking for our smallest first. So it's between these two. So which is smallest, 2 or 8? Ooh, this is smallest. So this one is going to be our first number that we list because it's our least number. And then this would obviously be our second because 3 and 4, 3 is smaller. Therefore, this would be our third third answer. Okay, now remember, you can't just list that as your final answer. You need to put it back in its original form because they asked you to order these numbers, not these, and they don't want to see your ordering. They want to see these numbers in order from least to greatest, so we have to take the next step of rewriting how they originally started in least to greatest form. So that was least, that one's the second smallest, and our largest is 0 0.41, and that would be our final answer.